Good afternoon. Thank you everyone for uh, joining us today here for our fourth community engagement session for the College of the Rockies Learning Commons and Library Design. My name is Tracy Evans and I am the Community Engagement Coordinator here at Barry Architecture and Associates. Um, hello everyone and again and I'm Isaac Martinez and I'm an architect here at Barry Architecture and Associates. And behind the camera we also have Tracy Wells who is helping us out as well. We would like to uh, acknowledge that the College of the Rockies Library exists on the unceded ancestral lands of the Tunaha and Kambasket peoples. We are grateful for the opportunity to work, live, and grow within these traditional territories. So last Thursday, we focused on the design principles of remove and reveal in relation to the new learning commons. We again had lots of great discussion and a lot of great feedback from everyone. So this afternoon, we're actually going to be looking forward um, to getting more input on now our last design principle and some furniture solutions. Uh, if you had joined the meeting about 10 minutes early, you may have already seen our agenda for today's session. Uh, but for those who may have missed it, we are going to do a quick Zoom refresher, uh, an introduction to today's topic, We'll jump into our community uh, input and then we'll do another quick wrap up again. All right, so as per usual, before we get going with our event, I'll go over the Zoom logistics. So given the challenges of doing a community engagement session remotely, we're gonna keep everyone muted and you can use the chat function or raise your hand function if you wanna ask your question out loud. If you're on your desktop computer, then the icons are gonna look similar to the image on the right-hand side of your screen. And if you're on your smartphone or your tablet, then you can just tap the three dots and a menu will pop up with the chat function and the raise your hand function, which is similar to the images on the right-hand side of your screen. We've planned for some open discussion to gather your input again today for our topic. And then as well, we should have a few minutes at the end of the presentation for any additional questions. And lastly, if you do have any technical difficulties during the presentation, we are recording today's session and it will be uploaded to our project website within the next 24 hours. Okay, so let's get started. So as you guys know, our goal for these sessions are to start a conversation with the College of the Rockies community about how the existing library is or is not meeting your needs and how you, would you like it to see it evolve? Uh, on session one, we started with the existing conditions of the library. Then we have been working our way through the design principles of reorganize, uh, rebalance, and reconfigures that we discussed in session number two. And then remove and reveal that we discussed on our last session number three. And today we will continue with the design principle of retain. Uh, and also we will discuss some furniture solutions that can be incorporated into the new design. So as we go through, through these questions, again, we want you guys to consider how we can foster the strong relationships uh, between the students, uh, community, faculty, and staff, as well as students with other students. So as we've mentioned over the last couple of weeks, we are using the following five design principles to help us consider what is important to you as we discuss the learning commons? Um, this week, we're, as Isaac said, we're focusing our discussion on the concept of retain. So to refresh our memories, uh, when we retain the historic character of the existing library and the surrounding buildings, we preserve a story of the city, the neighborhoods, and the school across generations. Um, we're also able then to acknowledge the relationship of the college and the Tsunaha people upon whose unceded ancestral lands we do learn and strive on. So buildings may be designed or constructed by maybe a local architect, constructor, or contractor, and this adds an historic fabric of a community or a site. So finding ways on how to retain the historic context uh, is important to consider um, when we're determining the path forward for the new learning commons. So some ways that we can uh, plan for this uh, may include, you know, uh, when existing buildings or spaces are in good condition, uh, renovation is often the most fiscally and environmentally sustainable approach. Uh, so we, we have to keep in mind that. 
uh, also in careful consideration should be always be given to the existing buildings or spaces ability to foot to support the future needs so building new will be an appropriate course of action in some cases um, and again additions and renovations should be respectful of the historic structures but should be designed to be of their time and place as well all right, so we're gonna get started with a couple quick questions now. Uh, the first one being a poll, which you'll see on your screen in a moment. Um, but the first poll for today is gonna be, how important is it to you that we retain the historical background of the existing library or the college in the new design? So maybe there isn't anything in the library, but maybe there's something in the college. Maybe there's something in both of these spaces. So how important is it for those elements to be retained? Yeah, maybe there's something in the in the community, right, or or surround, or around the area. So we'll give it a couple moments there for you guys to get your your answers in on the poll, and then start thinking about what those elements could be. Um, could be anything. Okay, are we getting close to get everybody's um, thoughts? We're almost there. It's a few more people that haven't voted yet. Okay, so we'll give it another second there and super easy. Just tap on whichever, um, click on whichever answer you agree with the most or maybe you don't have an opinion. Maybe you're just neutral on it. Maybe you don't, you don't know and that's totally fair and fine and that's okay. All right, well, it's looking like uh, the majority for this question, everybody is feeling that it's somewhat important. Okay. I haven't closed that yet, so if you want to change your mind on that, <laughs> feel free to get your answer in. All right, that's the two minute mark. You've had your time. <laughs> I will share with that uh, result with you a moment. Yeah, so for being somewhat important, you know, that's fairly good. We, it's showing that we, st we may have that desire to move forward to a little bit more of a modernization, um, but we do still appreciate that there's historical background that needs to be acknowledged. So it's good to hear that it's still somewhat important to, to most people out there. So good. So we'll move on to the next question, Isaac. Yeah, so the next question would be, uh, are there any historical features from the library or the college that you would like to see incorporated in the new design? Um, yeah, think of anything, you know, uh, you know, look at the pictures that we have shown right now as, you know, we've been to the college, we see pretty, pretty nice, uh, some elements of wood, uh, some nice glue lamps uh, in on the main entry. I don't know if there's anything else, any other element or feature that should be important to consider as, as we move into, into the design of the learning commons. Feel free, you can either use the chat function or if you'd rather speak your mind and say it out loud, just raise your hand and you can get yourself unmuted and we'd love to hear some opinions from everyone. Hi, it's Robin. I can't figure out how to raise my hand in Zoom, but can That's I go right. ahead and speak? Of course. <laughs> um, so I think 
for me, it's not so much about the historical, retaining the historical element of the library with, where it's currently located as much as it is integrating well with the rest of the building. Mm -hmm. And so the design features, for example, of the, the front entrance, et cetera, retaining that wood and light and natural elements um, and drawing that into the learning common space would be valuable. And then retaining, um, I'm thinking the outside of the building, um, uh, not wanting to disrupt uh, too much of the landscape if we do push outside the, the existing walls of the library, um, uh, would want to retain sort of the, the natural grounds or enhance the natural grounds if we can. For sure. Thank you. We appreciate that feedback there. Great feedback. Okay. Thank you, Robin. Yeah. I do have some more comments coming in here now on the chat uh, from Susan. Uh, most of the uh, more attractive features in the college are in areas that have been built or renovated within the last decade. Uh, from P. Parker, something with Indigenous content incorporated would be excellent. Uh, from Suzanne, uh, we'd like to see the timber frame style if we extend the library out further and also include some of the Aboriginal welcome center elements. From Karen, uh, main entrance at one time was from foyer. Now it's confusing because you can see in from the foyer, but have to go around the corner to get in. And Susan says yes to all Robin just said. Excellent. Yeah, those are great uh, thoughts. And as we say, right, they're pretty specific details or characteristics of the college as you come in there. Uh, as you guys mentioned, some of the uh, the timber features, the brick that you see uh, on the entry. So those are those are uh, things to consider for sure as as we look into ideas on the design for the facility. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I really love how um, yes, the college, but even just all around the Kootenay and Cranbrook area all the, the wood elements and the timber elements that you see throughout the community and the college, they're um, a really great part of the history or even just the culture of, of the area. So keeping that as something that's important is definitely great to hear that you want to hear, see, still see it in the new design, so. Yeah, and Brenda adds big windows, clear walls, transparency in all its aspects. Great. Excellent. Is there any more comments coming in? You maybe want to ask that question again. We've got a couple new people uh, just entered recently. Maybe they can join in on the conversation. Yeah, so um, for those who may have just recently joined in on the conversation, the question that we have up on the screen right now is, uh, are there any historical features from the library or the college that you would like to see incorporated in the new design? Um, so things that you want to see uh, brought into the new design or kept in the new design, maybe it is um, the location of the library. It doesn't have to be something st specifically historical from 100 years ago, but um, something that is stand out uh, in the current space that you'd like to continue seeing as the design develops. So. Not to put you on the spot. Just thought <laughs> I'd give you the opportunity to chat if you didn't get a chance to. Okay, let's go to the next one. Yeah. So moving on to our next kind of topic, um, we're going to start talking a little bit about our furniture solutions. So there are some goals that can be created through furniture solutions. And some of these goals are that we create an informal learning space that um, they're multi-purpose and they support group interactions. They provide students with comfortable ergonomic furniture that promotes physical well-being. They create a stimulating environment that sparks creative thinking and supports active learning. And the use of this furniture to create quieter or distraction-free study areas for the individual is, um, it's a little bit easier with different furniture solutions, so. 
kind of talk a little bit about all these different furniture ideas and solutions that can be created within the new learning common space. Okay, so when planning for uh, for this new learning common spaces, uh, there are four types of zones to consider and implement to support the collaboration, group work, private study, and technology. So the four zones that we'll be looking at are private alone. Uh, those are the individual spaces that should support quiet, uh, focused work, and provide some security of the work tools. So these spaces can be used for short, short term and long-term time periods as well. Uh, the next zone is the public alone. So those are the, the individual spaces for people who prefer to work in the company of maybe others to stay socially connected. These spaces create a balance of focused work and social interactions. Our next zone is the private together. So those are more enclosed rooms that support small to large groups for collaboration and some active learning. Uh, the furniture uh, is usually should be more mobile to rearrange the room to different needs. And also these pieces should offer the easy use of technology or screen sharing presentations and, you know, etc. And our last zone is the public together zone. And those are the more kind of open uh, gathering spaces uh, to support students uh, working together uh, at the, to achieve, you know, any, any goal. So those furniture solutions can offer some visual and acoustic privacy to reduce the amount of distractions that are produced in you know, this type of group settings. Okay, so we're gonna start off with our uh, private alone zone. So on the screen, you can see a floor plan. And in this floor plan, we can see some examples of these private alone work, um, private alone furniture solutions. Um, within an actual learning common setting. So you can see these with the study corrals, for example. Uh, students are able to work by themselves for as much time as they'd like, and they don't have to be distracted by other people because they're in a low private zone with some privacy screens. So what does private alone furniture or learning look like to you? So we'd like to hear from you guys. What do you think this kind of furniture looks like? Or where, how does this learning style look like to you guys? So we'll give you a couple minutes to get some ideas and thoughts out there. And on the screen too, you can see there's a couple examples of what might immediately jump to your mind. Um, but if there's anything else that you think might be that private alone style, feel free to shout it out. We'd love to hear it. From Suzanne, she says, the study carols in this picture would provide private slash alone for users. I like the barrier in front as well as both sides. Great. From Robin, uh, must be comfortable. Mm -hmm. A mix of desktop surface and comfy chairs. Good. I like the idea of working in a comfy chair myself, <laughs> especially if you're reading or um, yeah. doing research. Yeah. Well, and especially these spaces are meant for students. You might be there for a quick 10, 15 minutes, or you might be there for a couple of hours. These We want to make these zones flexible for all types of learners and all types of students. So when they're a little bit more comfortable, you might be enticed to stay there a little bit longer and actually get your stuff done. So, yeah. A couple comments. Suzanne uh, says, uh, the chairs in the photo don't look very comfortable. <laughs> uh, from John, need to have a big work area. Mm -hmm. And can you suggest other options besides Carol's? Yeah, so we'll be going into a little bit more of, <coughs> it's all good. Uh, we'll be going into a few more examples after this. We just want to kind of get a few thoughts from you guys. What are your immediate first thoughts of what it looks like? Um, but we definitely do have a few more examples. So don't worry if you feel like, the, oh, there's only one or two options. There's quite a few more, um, but they just might be a little bit on the creative side um, 
of the thinking. So we will go over them in a moment. Okay, from Suzanne, she says, I also like the small private spaces in the picture with option to close the door or not. Uh, from Brenda, task lighting. Mm -hmm. And Susan sends a couple links here uh, that we can't open in the meeting, but we'll check out afterwards from uh, agadi.com. A couple different products there. And from Brenda, mini study rooms. Mm -hmm. uh, John says, the noise seems as if it would be decided by the zone regulations. Yes. Uh, and Brenda says, yes. I love Agadi. <laughs> Smiley face. Yeah, there's tons of different furniture companies out there that we can um, work with, uh, especially like they have they have tons of products, sometimes products that we haven't even heard of. So working directly with a product manufacturer or a product rep is a great way to learn about some of those new products and the best products for the different areas. Um, and yes, talking to the, the point of the noise level, it definitely, the zones will control where the noise in the library um, will be louder in some areas, quieter in others, um, but it's all an integration. Uh, so I guess we'll go to the next, oh, just kidding, there's a few more comments. While you were chatting, more comments <laughs> came in, yes. So Robin is, says, I've seen creative options that are a bit like an individual pod. Mm -hmm. uh, phone booth or airplane business class. Yes. Uh, another comment, natural light is a big thing for some, for example me. Um, from Suzanne, I've seen chairs that are similar to the tub chair, but much higher, which almost wraps around the student and provides a lot of privacy. Some of them wow. also have headsets for users if they want complete silence. Exactly. So those are kind of those, those creative ones that we like. Yeah, and Brenda just adds, and furniture will uh, help define those zones. Mm -hmm. Definitely. <laughs> All right, so now uh, some of these other space, or some of these private alone spaces now, um, as we've seen, we've got a couple of those other examples on the screen. We've got your study crowds, your, um, I guess in a sense, a study cave for just one person, um, more of an actual pod style, or I like how somebody worded it like a bathtub. Love that example. That is perfect. Um, but yeah, so these spaces, they kind of look, how they look like, they, they're an enclosed space uh, for visual privacy. They support the need for extreme focus and concentration by blocking out all of the other distractions around you. Um, a user has temporary ownership of the space. You don't have to share it. It is all yours. Um, and they support a range of short or long-term ownership of the space and privacy with the assigned secured spaces. So yeah, you can, you can take 10 or 15 minutes there, or you can take an hour, two hours. It depends on what you're working on and you still have that privacy. So, just a comment, Ryan, mm -hmm. if this is good, and Brenda says ability to reserve some of the individual quiet. Yeah, definitely. Great. Susan okay, so moving right. forward into the public alone, uh, you know, we can see in this a little example, uh, floor plan, uh, uh, some example of the public alone furniture solutions in, in a learning common setting. Uh, so you can see in this in, in, in this plan, students or users are still able to work by themselves, but they're in a more social setting where other students may also be working openly around them. Uh, so yeah, you can see there's some soft seating uh, adjacent to here on this area. Uh, there's also you know there's also some um, some you know some uh, private alone areas as well here, uh, but also but there are more in a in a public setting as well. So it has a little bit of both in terms of, you know, you're still working by yourself, but you're in a more sociable space as well. So when you don't need as much quiet time, you still feel like you are part of the, of the whole area without being right uh, in, the, in the public. So kind of shows a couple of ideas in floor plan how that shows. And then in the next, uh, the next slide, we just wanna, we wanna ask you, so what those public alone furniture spaces or ideas are look like to you? What would you be would be the ideal location for those furniture solutions? Uh, what do you think will look like? Um, any kind of thought uh, regarding 
that would be great to hear. From Suzanne, we used to have high back chairs, which were uh, used much more than the current tub slash low back chairs. Okay. Uh, this is more on the right side, but with the high backs. Okay. I like on the right hand side picture too, um, similar to what I'm sitting in right now. It's, um, you've got a nice comfortable seat to sit in. Um, it would be, as mentioned, it would be a little bit nicer if the back was a little bit higher, um, but you do still have a little workspace here and I'm right out in the open. I can still socialize with the people around me and, but I can, I have work or have the space to work on my own, which is nice. Uh, Susan adds, I agree with Susan. Uh, Susan. The right hand side, but high backs. Uh, Karen says, looks like pull out footstools for short legs. <laughs> Not that I have any experience with it, but long legs also like footstools. Yes, <laughs> footstools are just nice. It's yes. nice to be able to, again, you're able to then to lounge there for a little bit of a longer period and relax. Um, if you're in a comfortable position, you'll probably stay there longer. Susan says most people like lounging. <laughs> yeah, it's nice to be in an area where you can still be focused on your work, but you don't feel, you know, maybe you don't need to be in that quiet space. So you can, uh, you're also, you know, are part of, of, the, of the social space in sort of way. So Suzanne adds, need more outlets to plug in devices. Yes. A lot of these, yeah. a lot of these furniture solutions keep that in mind as well. Um, certainly some of the more public social furniture solutions may be, um, you might, we might need to consider like some floor outlets or keeping it closer to a wall. Um, but there's definitely a lot of consideration for the technological side of things. Um, Robin says, I think students would prefer to be able to shift or move chairs. Mm -hmm. uh, Brenda says, folding movable tables that can be placed together or pulled apart, larger tables that can have dividers added to provide side to side or three way privacy. Okay, great. Any other thoughts? Not that have come in on the chat. Oh, one more. Um, sorry, Brenda also adds laptop uh, bar arrangement with power. And um, another additional question, some people like high tables and chairs, like in coffee bars, allows for a mix of individual work and socializing with passers-by. Definitely. Um, an additional one, a bicycle power desk. So we can maybe move to the next slide and that will maybe bring us some other thoughts to, from everybody. Uh, just. Uh, the next slide just shows some more examples of this kind of uh, uh, public alone spaces, right? And again, as you guys mentioned, right, uh, had to be a lot of access to technology, a lot of blocks, uh, maybe close by to 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 only other online services, printers, uh, maybe computers. So those are really important features to to have in these uh, kind of spaces. And, and again, no, maybe those are spaces that have a dedicated computer workstations uh, with some maybe specialized software as well, right? So uh, some of those images show uh, that maybe there's some dedicated computers or, or laptops uh, with, within those uh, more like a public alone areas. And Robin suggests remember accessibility for mobile concerns. Mm -hmm. Sorry, mobility concerns. Definitely. Right. So now we'll move on to private together. Uh, so in this floor plan, we can see a couple different examples of how we can do a public together um, solution. So we have um, the opportunity for large group booth seatings potentially, um, or an enclosed study room even. Uh, students are still able to work collaborative, collaboratively together in a group setting. 
Um, as these areas are maybe a little bit more quiet, they're a little private or um, you're either completely enclosed or you're semi-enclosed. Uh, so noise is definitely less of, less of a concern in these areas. Um, so again, we'll pose the same question now, um, but this time, what does private together furniture or a learning um, solution look like to you? How, how do you see this being worked into the learning commons and your, your thoughts? Maybe before we get into that question, I've had a few kind of comments going back and forth. Uh, Brenda says, web-based guide to help students find available space when they arrive in the library. Uh, maybe desks that can uh, change between standing and sitting with the raising and lowering chair. Yeah. Uh, Suzanne sends another link that says, here are some options uh, from urbanoffice.com. We'll take a look at that after. Uh, John says, movable walls for group size, flexibility. Mm -hmm. Uh, another comment again with some variety for closed rooms for group studies together as well as uh, groups totally open. Definitely. And I love the idea, I, again this is probably back on last question a little bit more, but I love the idea of the sit stand um, option. You could use that in a private setting, you could use that in a group setting. Um, it just gives you some variability on how you're using that space at a time. Sitting for a long period of time for some people is not comfortable. Uh, so having that opportunity to have a standing workstation is great, so. And Susan says, should include a range from totally isolated acoustically for loud uh, groups is suitable for quiet uh, group work. Um, and then round or oval tables are more flexible. Whiteboard walls for brainstorming. And Robin says whiteboards slash smart boards slash technology for collaboration. Perfect. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think there has to be uh, some variety in this kind of spaces. Some have to be pretty nice and soundproof, be quiet, and other ones maybe a little more open, like to from like similar to what we see on the on the. And similar to some of your individual workspaces, it's great to have these ones also on some sort of an electronic booking system, so that way you don't have to go around searching for an open space to work as a group. It's already there, it's available, you already have scheduled it for a certain time. So you just have to show up and know what's, what room is yours. John also adds, I've seen clear glass writing walls too. Yep. And Susan said it's some of both of your examples. Perfect. Right. So yeah, you guys have kind of hit the mark on this one there. So really with these spaces, they, yeah, they're, they support a fluid switch between activities. Um, we provide a range of blended learning and teaching environments with these spaces. So we can do your online stuff, your webinars, your presentations, group projects, stuff like that. Um, we're able to support multiple different meeting modes. We can do an informal um, kind of meeting just all together, or you can have an evaluation meeting, we can co-create on stuff, so uh, provides options for that. It also provides options for whether you're doing a large group project or a small group project. Um, we're able to help provide tools for visual display, collaborative technology, information and acoustical privacy, and we're able to provide highly flexible, flexible, customizable furniture in some of these space, spaces as well, so that you're able to still have more of that collaboration, privacy, ergonomic needs um, that are met, things like that. And yeah, all of that different kind of technology, the writable surfaces, it's great, love it. Okay, and just one more comment before we move along. Um, John says, it would be nice if some are soundproof for louder groups. Yes. Yes. For sure. Oh, and Susan asks, staff areas like the top left with perhaps uh, screens incorporated within the glass. For sure. Okay, so moving to the next one. Uh, you know, this floor plan now shows a few examples of this kind of public together furniture solutions. Um, so, uh, you know, it has a lot of, uh, op it's a really open setting. Uh, it has to be with some flexible seating for small and large groups. So here, all the users of the Learning Commons are able to work uh, in collaboration together in, in group settings in different areas that are really accessible. 
but also we need to ensure that uh, keep in mind that these areas need to be uh, separated from the more quiet individual student spaces, right? To ensure that these open areas do not disturb disturb the, the entire learning common. So you can see how there's some nice examples uh, of some like a uh, more open seating, open spaces uh, within within this within the space, and allow for more like a more like a group uh, open public kind of gatherings. And so yeah, again, yeah, once again, we want to ask you guys, how do you, what do this kind of public together furniture looks like for you, for you guys? What would be the best location to have this type of seating that is more open and public? Uh, where's the best location to have it? Uh, what type of furniture? Uh, if it has to be really movable, flexible enough to move it around, to, to have different types of gatherings, maybe trainings, maybe a conference. What do you guys think? Uh, so Robin suggests flexible for reconfiguration. Uh, further to that, Susan says comfortable, mobile, configurable. No, and yeah, what a, lot of, a lot of a lot of times we find that you know uh, they, you know there may be some the more open public areas we want to use them for different types of mm -hmm. social gatherings or purposes uh, yeah. as a conference as a training space uh, you know there can be different types of events happening within those areas even i remember from one of our previous sessions um somebody had brought up the idea of like community events like maybe um a local authors uh reading off Part of their book or um, maybe poetry nights something like that so just impromptu events so furniture that provides comfort for some of these events but also provides that flexibility for the different types of events that could be held there so uh, brenda public together needs to be near the entrance while private alone is better further away from the entrance, the public yep. desks and services. And Robin says, interesting and varied, not too institutional looking. Uh, Brenda says, chairs or love seats with wheels and handles for easy mobility, mm -hmm. uh, flexible furniture, uh, always, oh, flexible furniture, always of all sizes and shapes. Uh, Susan says, like the left-handed, better than the right. And John says, near the coffee bar. <laughs> <laughs> coffee bar would definitely be a little bit more of a public area for sure, so it would be very fitting. And who doesn't like to be able to sit in a nice comfy couch when they're having a coffee? Uh, Brenda says, media screens for messaging or for group work in the open. Mm -hmm. Excellent, great thoughts. So in the next slide, you guys will see uh, some other examples about some of the spaces, right? Um, maybe here I've seen some of them might be a little more like a my private together, but uh, as well, right? You can see that this could be located in a more public space uh, where there can be more collaboration. Uh, there can be in spaces where, you know, allows for different types of uses and maybe moving this furniture around, right? As depending of uh, what are the, the needs of the of the learning commons in certain uh, times. So it's important to keep this furniture pretty flexible so it can be moved around within the space. I just have a comment. Hard bench might not be as comfortable as comfy couches. Mm -hmm. Perfect. All right, so now we've kind of discussed all of these different areas. We've seen um, multiple different ways that the furniture solutions can provide uh, different zones and levels of learning with, within the com commons, the learning commons. Um, we can provide different levels of um, comfort and uh, study for all the different users. So we just want to show you a few more examples to kind of stimulate the mind and see that there really are a huge variety of different furniture solutions that could be incorporated in the new design. 
So um, image number one, we can see an example of what we'd like to call a study cave. And a study cave is something, it is a private alone furniture solution. So a study cave kind of allows students to block out distractions. They can settle in for a long period of time and just get work done. So these areas, they should have high panels that provide privacy and block out distractions while we're still allowing some light to penetrate through the glass. Um, sometimes they have strategic open panels that allow more light to penetrate, but still help offer security. Uh, they should have a large enough workspace, uh, a work surface that allows the student to spread out all of their materials, uh, both analog and digital. So if they have a laptop, they have it there. Um, and then the seating should be very ergonomical so that it supports focused work over a long period of time if they're there for an extended period. Um, set, or in image number two then, we can see an example of a study corral. Maybe not your traditional study corral, but it's there. Um, and it's also another private alone furniture solution. So again, study corrals, uh, they block out all the other distractions while maximizing the real estate um, by providing an oasis for focused work anywhere on campus. So these can actually, like, they don't have to be just in the learning commons. They could be popped down anywhere on campus and probably be used. Uh, they should have an adjustable work surface that brings the students' devices and content to eye level. Uh, this then minimizes the strain on their shoulders, back, um, neck, things like that. They should have screens that help minimize distractions around them in their peripheral vision. Uh, that helps to increase their attention on what they're working on. And then maybe having a footrest to support students in a lounging position, which we've already talked about. A lot of people do like to lounge. Um, and then image three, we see an example of something called a first class cabin, um, which is again, another, or another variety of a private alone solution. So these first class cabins, they allow students to seek more of an inspiration uh, when they need it. And then it also allows them to easily get back into flow of the work that needs to get done. So these typical to all of our other furniture, furniture solutions, um, these ones should also have integrated power to allow students to settle in for long study sessions. Um, maybe having a reclined posture positions to um, keep, keep everybody comfortable and engaged in what they're doing. Um, and then again, having some shielding to block distractions on the sides and allows for more privacy. Just some this, comments that have come in, if you don't mind, all on this page. I know you're chatting lots. No, go right ahead. Um, so Rena said, uh, incorporate some of the solutions across the campus to allow other spaces to be learning areas as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and I like the mini booth, image one. Uh, Suzanne says, we do get requests for a single user in a study room. Number one would be suitable. Yeah. Uh, from Robin, number two looks like a very efficient use of space. Uh, Suzanne says, the nursing area in Summit Building would benefit from some of these types of pods. Uh, Susan says, number one and two look inviting without being overpowering. Number three might be a good idea for outside the learning commons. Mm -hmm. Definitely. It shows you some variety and um, Definitely, we love that the, these can be used in more than just a learning common space. They are versatile and can go pretty much anywhere. So now we've got a few more. Um, so now we'll move on to image number four, which uh, is something called a campsite. Uh, this, ex this specific example is uh, public alone um, or pro uh, public together. Um, so with this style of a campsite, it's multi-purpose um, and supports more of like a social break um, or maybe collaborative group work, individual study uh, with the ability to then spread out all of your materials. Um, these are a great space to maybe have a monitor to share campus news or other information to keep all of the students connected. Uh, maybe this is that display place for all of the Learning Commons information or updates from around the campus. 
um, again, soft seating to provide comfort and support for long study sessions. And again, another large work surface for multiple users or um, lots of materials that one student might bring with them. Um, image number five. Um, <laughs> it's okay. Uh, image number five is an example of a learning bench, um, which is another public alone furniture solution. So this solution provides an area for students who maybe need to focus to get work done, but still like to be in the presence of other students. Um, task lighting is really great here so that individuals have some control over their space. Um, it provides students with their own workspace while they're still visually available to everyone. Uh, and again, some more soft seating for those longer stays. Image number six, we have a second example of a campsite. Um, again, also another public alone or public together setting. In this campsite though, it allows students to meet socially between classes or kind of shift from that alone work to together work maybe in the evenings. Uh, these kind of tend to have a side workspace kind of similar to what I have here. Um, so that students can put their papers or devices up there and they're up close to them. Uh, somehow, maybe an accommodation for storage of your own personal items. So your backpack or pencil case, water bottles, things like that. And then some storage maybe around like either on the back or on the sides to kind of help separate the space from uh, the openness of the rest of the library. And then finally on this page, uh, image number seven, is an example of a drive-through. Um, this is an example of a public alone furniture solution again. So drive-throughs are more focused on supporting a short-term walk-up task. So maybe this is more of like your self-service options that we talked about last time. Uh, so maybe like doing a quick library search um, for a certain book or a resource or printing or checking out a book that you want to take with you, things like that. So having the option for students to have a small space of storage, uh, keeping their stuff off the floor so it doesn't get in anybody else's way. Um, some soft seating maybe that they can just take a load off while they're getting things printed. Um, but these tend to have stools that are maybe um, higher so that they're not they're comfortable, but they're not going to support you wanting to stay there for an hour. So more of that short term style. Do a couple comments if you don't mind. By all means, I like the break of not talking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, from John, the clip bars under number five are nice. Uh, number four has some good features like the monitor, particularly if users can connect laptops. It does look like it might generate noise. Uh, Brenda says the idea of traditional reading rooms speaks to private together mm -hmm. with enough separation along long tables or connected terrace uh, terrels with task lighting and other amenities that set a quiet, respectful tone, but in a modern way. Yes. Uh, John says nice to have storage for students under the seats in pictures four and six. Mm -hmm. uh, number five looks more like lab furniture and not particularly flexible. Uh, Suzanne says, um, round tables are better for group work rather than number five. Um, and Susan says, side work surfaces tend to promote poor posture. Side work surfaces that curve around a bit more. For sure. Oh, great input. Like a lot of these things we, um, we can use and take back to some of our product reps. Then um, once it comes time to picking some of this furniture, then we can we can let them know like, hey, this is what they're looking for. They like this idea, but want it, for example, they like the idea of a learning bench, for example, but not so much in a rectangular setting, more in an oval setting, something like that, or whatever. Even the work services, you're right. Like it's definitely awkward uh, and create some weird postures when it's off to the side. Being able to bring it in front of you is much, much easier and nicer on the back, so for sure. 
and because everybody wants to hear more from me, I've got one more, <laughs> one more slide of uh, some furniture solutions. So um, in image number eight, we can see an example of something similar to a group study room, or in this case, it's called an immersive work studio. Um, so this is an example of your private together uh, area. So these areas, kind of, they allow for groups to meet and complete si assignments within the library, but maybe not disturbing anybody else in the library. Um, they provide groups with that privacy and tools for collaboration. Uh, so they should have writable surfaces so that everybody can brainstorm within their team. Um, should have easily movable, maybe low height furniture so that uh, it's easier for students to move around and reconfigure so that the space really becomes their own while they're in there. Um, should have a room scheduling system so that groups can book these spaces in advance. Like I said, that way you don't have to start running around the, the library praying that there's an open space for you to work. Um, and yeah, so it creates, it's, it's that privacy, not only for that group, but privacy from the, for the rest of the library. They don't have to tune into what the project is that they're working on. Um, and then our final example, it's one more example of a campsite. Um, this campsite, however, is more of a private together uh, solution. So in this, in this example, students are provided with ample space to spread out and work together. Um, it provides students with a bit, of, a bit more choice and control in an inviting and collaborative uh, setting uh, to co-create and discuss things together. They tend to have a mounted display for digital information. Um, you could make it so that those um, displays are like a library display when they aren't being used and then once a laptop is connected up to it, then they can switch it over so that it's usable for them so that they can present and uh, screen share, things like that. Um, they have multiple different seating options so that students have um, the choice of where they want to sit and how comfortable they want to be. Um, and then they just have, they have lots of space so that students can really spread out. Um, they have space that can be their own while they're still collaborating within a group. So that's it for me. <laughs> <laughs> Great, and Suzanne uh, says on number eight there, it also accommodates different uh, physiologists. Yes. So on this slide, I guess when we when we put together all the pieces of the puzzle here, right, that we've been showing you guys uh, through this presentation, uh, this is sure a full kind of layout uh, that shows uh, a floor plan. So when we combine all these four zones that support collaboration, group work, private study, uh, then uh, we're able to meet the needs of all the uses within the learning common, right? So. So this is great, as you can see, uh, this plan show all these areas together where you can find spaces for, for quiet study areas, for more private alone. Uh, where we can see uh, some seating areas that are more into the public, uh, public spaces. We have here areas that are more enclosed where also more like a, you know, more like a private together. Uh, on this plan, we show a little bit also of, uh, you know, as you come in into the, this learning commons, there's some areas where you can have self-service self -service as you come into reception area. Um, you know, there's a little maker space. So as, as all these songs come together, we really create a space that is really flexible, uh, that allows for all these different types of collaborations uh, within all these levels, right? So allowing for people to still work, uh, you know, in the different types of settings they need to, in a private or a public or a, maybe a, uh, some flexibility of, of both uh, and create some spaces that are really functional and really create a, a learning commons that you know that works uh, well for for all the users great awesome so again that's that's kind of it for the the questions for today um, and that's really the big majority of our community input for for right now, um, next week we will be having one last session. Um, it will be kind of our 
summary of everything that we've heard over the last couple of weeks, um, a brief discussion on what some of the next steps might be. Um, so I, I tell everybody to uh, tune into that one if they've missed some of the other events and want to just have a quick overview of what they may have missed. Next week is the best session for that. There will be a little bit of everything. Um, and we'll have all of the questions that we asked this afternoon on our project website as well starting tomorrow. Again, available for um, at least the next week, if not a little bit longer. So if you want to get any of your last minute input in on any of those questions, please fill those questionnaires out. Uh, tell your friends, tell anybody you know, if they want to get their input, please check out our website. All of the questionnaires from the last I guess now four weeks uh, are available so they can still provide input on session number one if they really want to. Um, but yeah, is there any other last questions, comments, anything anybody wants to point out, say? Brenda just says, thanks everyone for attending and sharing your ideas. Suzanne also says, thank you. Great. Well, thank you, everyone. And yeah, as, as Tracy mentioned, please feel free to go back to previous sessions and provide your input if you didn't have a chance to do that, because that's uh, really important for us to, to make sure that we, we gather uh, yeah, everybody's thoughts. And again, uh, if you had any difficulties at all, the session was recorded, so it will be put on our project website tomorrow. Um, so it'll be there for your viewing pleasure. <laughs> and just one more. Thank you. All these sessions have been very important. Great. Oh, we'll let everybody get off with the rest of their day and thank you again for joining us and we look forward to seeing everybody again next week.